Welcome back to Room 1 on 1 from the Home Boys. It's our first since that evening in Dortmund, which I hope never to be reminded of ever again. Um, but next up, after the international break, is a massive game for both teams. As Aberdeen travel to Glasgow for the first time this season with a fantastic 13 wins from 13 games, I am delighted to welcome back Gavin Baxter from the ABZ Football Podcast back to the show to tell us a wee bit more about his game. So, Gav, how are you, pal? I'm very well, thank you, Scott. Thank you very much for having me back on the show. Delighted to be here and delighted to be talking about Aberdeen <laughs> FC in a completely new light in comparison to when we spoke uh, last April. And I offer no promises that I will not bring up the Dortmund result. Right, okay. Right. So we'll just can it now then. <laughs> As you can see, like, all this Dortmund stuff, this is all getting burned very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, so first meeting of the season, so you're long in the tooth, you know the script here. We're going to have a wee look back at last season before we go and have a look at what's happening this season, right? Sure. So, yep. so fresh from being appointed full-time manager on 1st of May 2023, Barry Robson took the team into the season after his spell in charge after replacing Jim Goodwin. He managed a third-place finish and a Europa League playoff place. Now, league-wise, didn't start great. Took him till match day six and a 4 0 home win at, uh, to Ross County before Aberdeen would rack up a league win, losing to Celtic, Hibs and Hearts, as well as dropping points in both Livingston and Paisley. Followed that up with a 3 1 win against Rangers at Ibrox. During that period, Aberdeen came up against BK Hacken of Sweden in the aforementioned Europa League play, uh, Europa League playoff. 2 2 draw in Gothenburg was a decent result, but a 3 1 reverse. At home, saw them drop into Euro Europa Conference League group paired with Eintracht Frankfurt, HK, HGK and Pauk. But more of that in a minute. Now, league-wise, it didn't really get much better than uh, than that win over Rangers. Until the end of January, the team sat in eighth position. Six wins, seven draws, ten defeats from the 24 games played. 27 goals scored, 27 conceded, two points, half hibs and seven. Now, in the League Cup, Barry Robson oversaw wins against Stirling Albion 2-1, Ross County 2-1 and a 1-0 Hamden win over Hibs to take the team to, back to Hamden and play Rangers on the 17th of December. 76 minute, James Tavernier goal was enough to win the Lister League Cup final. We spoke about that last year. No use fucking going over. In Europa, uh, it was a case of what could have been narrow defeats to Frankfurt and Pauk and a three draws with HGK home and away and an away to Pauk. So Aberdeen already out before the final match at home to Frankfurt, but they still, the team still finished the group style with a nice 2-0 win and finished the group in third place, six points on board, three behind the Germans in second, further ten behind group winners Pauk. Right, now, again, we've spoken about this, so there's no point labouring on it, but just to kind of remind people that this this actually did fucking happen. Um, on the 31st of January of this year, in what seemed a yearly occurrence, Aberdeen fired their manager. Peter Levin returned his intern and immediately got the new manager bounced with a one each draw at home to Celtic, where the team could really call himself unlucky not to take all three points. The club then made the bold and not a small but silly move to appoint Neil Warnock as interim coach for the remainder of the season. <laughs> I'm sorry Scott, to bring us all Scott, back Scott, up. Scott, I'll, I'll, I'll make a deal with you. Okay, I won't mention Dortmund if you just <laughs> gloss over what you're about to talk about. Right, right. So Warnock, blah, 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 blah. Right, and then he's got shot him. And he's got to the semi-final against Celtic on the 20th, 20th of April. Um, despite that good... Uh, right, blah, 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 blah. Right, so anyway, anyway. Leaving finished the season particularly well, despite being in the, the, the bottom half of the league, which obviously is a wee bit. So the 1-0 defeat to Dundee on the 13th of March would be Aberdeen's final league defeat of the season, as Leaving overseen six wins and three draws in the remainder of the league campaign, as Aberdeen finished in seventh place, six points ahead of sixth place Dundee, and two points ahead of eighth place Hibs. 38 games played, 12 wins, 12 draws, 14 losses, 48 goals scored, 52 conceded, 48 points on board. In the Scottish Cup, it was nervy stuff, and despite scoring three times, Aberdeen would eventually lose out 6-5 on penalties. So there's that season over, right? Like I said, there's, we, we spoke in April, so there's no need to fucking delve into the, the old stuff. But if we talk about the Peter Levin stuff, now, as a team who appointed 
Barry Robson on the back of some good results. Mm -hmm. I suppose the the Jimmy Taylor appointment early doors kind of saved you for that part of the game in the summer. Eh? At least you knew something was changing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that was always the case when it was ever mm -hmm. um, a circumstance where Peter Levin was going to be considered for the job, yeah. no matter how well he did. And make no mistake, given what had gone before him, Peter Levin did an incredible job yeah. and continues to be an integral part of our setup. I'm so happy that he's decided to still see his future at Aberdeen through the summer with the new Jimmy Tulleen era. There's been interest from Wraith Rovers and St Johnston. He's knocked both back um, and I'll be delighted if he can at least stay here for the remainder of this season because I think he is such a key figure in the kind of transition between where we were and where we are now with Jimmy Tulleen. Mm. Um, yeah, just incredible stuff. But I think we, the club always knew that we had to go in a different direction and the fans were calling for that. We talked about it at the time yeah. in April about... I looked back at it. We talked on... So your show was published on the 15th of April and we announced Jimmy Tallinn as manager on the 16th of April. Yeah, it was also a case that we kind of knew it was coming. It was a matter of yeah. when, not if. And we talked about how there have been other potential candidates lined up primarily by the pundits in in the west of in the west of scotland trying to get their mates jobs uh, as per and the reaction the Aberdeen support to particularly michael o'neill was pretty unanimous that that's not what we want to do mm -hmm. we contrary to a few vox pops outside Pataudry, we didn't want neil lennon <laughs> we needed to go in a different direction and try something new and we were calling for something fresh and Jimmy Tallinn is exactly what that was and credit to the club which is not something I've said all that often in the past three seasons but even though we got knocked back to begin with we stuck at it and uh, eventually Jimmy got Tulane our man. You back? Initially yes uh, we went back we I don't know exactly what, what we offered that sweetened the deal but um, later in the day he was uh, he was our man Excellent, excellent. So, uh, you've, you've literally just going to bring it up anyway. So, so the summer, the new manager time again, 46-year-old Swedish coach, Jimmy Tillin was recruited by the club from Ellsberg in the Swedish League. He was actually appointed on the 16th of April, as you just said, but he didn't start until June and signed a yeah. three-year deal. Yeah. And his time with the Swedish club, he, he maintained a top league status and finished in eighth, second, fourth, sixth, and again last season in second. So, I mean, we're, we're a couple of we're a good few weeks down the line now. You must be overly impressed by the impact he's made. I mean, it's is been, that an understatement? It's been it's been incredible, absolutely. Um, I think when he came in, we we knew the scale of the challenge that faced him, and you know, we're not a club that's flush with limitless amounts of cash where we can bring in any number of players that he wants and completely mm -hmm. turn over the squad again. We've done that for the past three, four seasons of these yeah, mass turnarounds. Yeah, wasted, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think we expected that maybe he'd have to work with some players that maybe are not necessarily part of the long-term thinking mm -hmm. and make do with what he can, and it'll be a three, four window uh, job to get the team up to where he wants it to be. Like you say, still early days, and we haven't put together per se the complete performance yet. I think there's still a long way for this team to grow. But I mean, 13 wins out of 13, you can't ask for any better than that. Um, you, you literally can't. <laughs> I, I, I know that sports scene and sports scene like to say we haven't been tested yet, uh, mm -hmm. which um, we have had definitely a beneficial fixture list so far with the the league cup the way it's drawn out and the way the fixture computer uh decided on our first opening seven games in the league but i don't really know what they want us to do about that yeah we can't well, really can turn around and just say well actually you know can we can we just have celtic rangers and hearts away in our first three games just to get a little test and see where we I'll, are I'll, I'll stall you on that one because i have got an opinion as you'll be amazed to know but um right so we'll fire through you, you spoke about you He's not had this big bag of money thrown at him, no. but he's um, the signings he's made certainly on inspection have all been good. 
good signings. But so anyway, we'll, we'll rattle through these, same as always, right? So outs yep. first. So Aaron Reid, the young uh, striker, signed for Airdrie. Johnny Hayes retired, sub- subsequently joined Celtic youth coaching team. Kai Watson joined Hartley. Connor Barron saw his contract signed with Rangers. Kieran Nguyenwena joined Dunfermline. Finlay Murray departed for Cove Rangers. Kelly Roos, the former number one, joined Triestina in Italy. Uh, Junior Hoylett couldn't agree a new deal signed with Hibs. Jaden Richardson left for Boreham Wood. He eventually got rid of Andy Stewart on a permanent as he <laughs> fucked off the absolute. Christopher uh, Christovi Gondoli and Ruben Smiley departed without sealing deals as of yet and they, they've all left the free transfers. The big out, however, was Bojan Miowski uh, securing yes. a move to the Spanish Primera Division and high flying Girona for a fee said to be around six point eight. Is that correct? I believe that's what it is. Yeah, around transfer six. mart. Transfer mart are hilarious with a fucking the fees. They say it was like two point seven or something, but I don't know about <laughs> and, that. anyway, uh, seven un- undisclosed as they always are. They say uh, oh, the famous seven, million, seven million euros, I believe, is sort of a pretty accurate. Brilliant, brilliant. Miowski was signed in 2022 for MTK Budapest for around six, 650 grand, scored 44 goals in 98 matches in that yeah. two year spell. Wow. Yeah. Um, fly through Tom Ritchie, Adam Elmsley, Finlay Marshall, Blair McKenzie, Ryan Duncan, Ryan Jensen, Alfie Babbage secured loans to Bonnie Red Cove, Montrose, Queen's Park. Velgy and Area United respectively, while Dylan Loban got his own half season loan at Cove as well. Right, so yeah. big ones, ins. So a mainstay straight away, Gavin Malloy, 22 yeah. year old Irish defender, was signed from Shelburne for around 75 grand. 75 year old uh, for Nigerian forward Peter Ambrose was picked up from Uspest for an undisclosed fee. Another undisclosed fee was agreed for standout keeper, 27 year old Bulgarian international Dimitar Mitov. 33 year old veteran centre mid Sivert Helt Nielsen was picked up for 300 grand from Bran, reunited with Tillin after his spell at Ellsberg together. And Pal- Palaversa. A 24-year-old Croatian under-21 defensive midfielder cap was brought in from Troyes for another undisclosed fee. Now, he, the former Hadouk split player, was signed by Man City for around €7 million. Euros. Never really made the breakthrough there. Spent the last few years floating about alone before heading to Troyes. And finally, 21-year-old Finnish winger Top Keskinen, Keskinen was picked up for around 900 grand from HGK. He's a full Finnish international. The club also signed Scotland international for, forward Kevin Nisbet after admittedly a dismal spell in England on a season-long loan from Millwall. After making the £2 million move from Hibs, he scored only five times in 30 games and he'll be looking to get himself back in action. Right, so I think you've seen everybody, maybe Barn Ambrose. Mm-hmm. Are you happy with the ins? Are you happy? Well, I would say the outs. The outs are fine, apart from Miowski. You'd love to keep them, but we know we know where we are. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you must be happy with the signings that have come in. And is there anything you're kind of missing? Oh, I mean, yeah, of course. We're again, we're. I think I said earlier, we're nowhere near the finished article. Um, I think we could have used some more depth, um, particularly in the defensive areas, uh, right back, wing back. Um, left side and also perhaps even in the center but on the whole um peter ambrose is probably the one player who's not made much of an impact mm-hmm. yet um definitely seems like a bit of a project player and maybe one for the future otherwise the players you mentioned have come in and made an immediate impact nice. um yeah a very we spoke about the recruitment in april from yeah. the season prior and it was disastrous um you're talking there about richard jensen the finnish international who's been Punted out on loan because we Hi. didn't see a place for him, and he's now playing um in the in the Danish league for the team that are rooted to the bottom. So that speaks volumes there. Um, Kellerus, I've shed no tears when Kellerus departed these shores. And Bad I mean, one Con- because initially he looked departly. I've, I've spoke to you several times, and I don't know why, but I had, had a thing for Joe Lewis. I thought Joe mm-hmm. Lewis was a great goalkeeper, oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah. but he took a massive. It just it was just one day, just went whoop, and fell off a cliff. And I thought yeah. Roos looked apart in the first two games, but then <laughs> see when you're playing Anthony Stewart, I don't hang some <laughs> with the boy, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I mean, I'm glad that you thought he was good after two games because I didn't. No, um, right, okay, there was, you go. It just shows you, didn't it? It was when Robson came in and we went on that pretty insane run and he had 
um, scales McDonald and Pollock in front of him <laughs> with Shinny and Ramadani as the screens. And at that point, it looked like he'd put everything together. I've said this many times on our show. If you were to build a goalkeeper from the ground up, he will look something like Kelrus because he's got <laughs> everything. Six foot six, he's agile, but just never put it together. And I mean, I noticed pretty early on in his Aberdeen career that as a goalkeeper at penalties, he is probably the smallest, least imposing six foot six goalkeeper you've ever seen play the game. So I wasn't, um, I wasn't counting on him to come up with heroics <laughs> when we went to the penalty show in uh, in Hamden in April. <sighs> And then, I mean, I guess the other major one, like you say, Miofsky went. We always knew Miofsky was going. Yeah. He was destined for far bigger things than than Scottish football. I'm delighted for him that he got the move to, to Girona. And I do believe that in time he'll be a success there. Mm-hmm. Another one that's notable is, I guess, Connor Bannon, who we had high hopes for. Uh, noticed how low down in the pecking order he'd be when we brought in Helton and Nielsen and Palaversa. And Danny Polbara comes back in and he had to go and find some football playing for a 10-year-old ten-year-old old club down in Glasgow. <laughs> okay, Conor Barham is always somebody I was told was good. I, I don't know. It's unfair to, to judge him on Aberdeen over the last two years because he's I've had some good players who have kind of struggled the past couple of years. Jamie McGrath being a perfect yeah. example. Jamie McGrath's a very, I think, a really, really exciting player. We'll come to him in a minute, but I think he's looking like the player he should be just now. Yeah. But as you see, kind of revolving, revolving manager, revolts, all these players coming in and players leaving, he kind of got lost in it. And I would say Conor Barron, for me, no for you, for me, because Celtic were like me him a long time ago. Yeah. And I would watch him and I'm going, we've seen, I'm not seeing anything that makes me think, yeah, this is it. Do you know, now like the way John McGinn appeared yeah. and just fucking blew his all away. I wasn't seeing that from him. I'm still not seeing that personally, but I'm yeah. biased as hell. You know what I mean? I, so. I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not saying this to be flippant over the fact mm-hmm. that he signed for Rangers. I genuinely do mean this. If Connor Barron was still at Aberdeen, it for me he'd be a sixth choice centre midfield. Right. He's okay. no right. major right. loss at all. Uh, a guy with a lot of potential. Uh, to be fair, yep. Yeah, I mean, struggled because we played under Robson a style of football that didn't yeah. involve small talented midfielders who had to pass the ball um <laughs> he had a lot of neck muscle exercises watching the ball fire over his head and i mean there was the issue with jim goodwin because he shared the same agent as andrew considine right. so then we couldn't get the extension and i think that put him out of favor and then we had the chance to sign leighton clarkson and just like all these things meant that he never got the game time that he probably should have and in the end he decided that he wanted to move and rather than broaden his horizons he just went to go and play for Rangers so once again you can tell the professional that you are that's a fantastic segue to jump right into the squad as is now as all, as we all these I look at who I know um, so straight away the guys we spoke about every one of them apart from Ambrose from watching highlights have all impressed me um, Nicky Devlin has been a, a smashing player yeah how he doesn't get more regular time in Scotland. Don't know. Jamie McGrath is looking like the player I thought he always could and should be, even even doing it for Ireland just recently. Um, Pap Habib Gwe, a guy that I knew nothing about, he's looking like a superstar after being yep. sent in loan last season. Um, still no Duke. Is that done and done and done? Uh, no, no, Duke's back in the team. So he's back in. He's, I mean, he was yep. only played Duke. one time. Duke uh, was welcomed back in um, just after the window shut, came back, um, apologised for his behaviour. Um, oh, I think the club handled it perfectly. Um, right. He, We made a statement. The language from all three people involved, being that being Burroughs, um, Alan Burroughs, our chief executive, mm-hmm. Jimmy Tleen and Duke himself, all made it very clear um, where the blame lay in this situation. And it was very much at Duke's feet. And Jimmy Tleen because of the way that he's communicated and brought this kind of family all for one mentality back into Aberdeen, I don't think many managers could have done what he's done in bringing Duke back and not be met with huge hostility. But yeah. I think we all acknowledge that it will have been a decision taken by Talin, his coaching staff, and the senior players, if not all of the players, 
to welcome yeah, what, Duke back what into was, the fold. What was this script with Duke? Because obviously for the outside, we just kind of seen that he just stopped turning up. And right. obviously after a very, very impressive first season, mm-hmm. he, was yeah. overs- he was overshadowed by all- my offs. It was interesting. Yeah. Me and you spoke two years ago at the start of the season. And I couldn't believe that Miofsky had scored more goals and done more assists than Duke because yeah. Duke was getting every headline in the world and Miofsky was kind of under that radar. So what is it the case of he just, it's no work for him this second season, so he's kind of trying to push out on? It's, it's a long story. Um, the way that was put across to us by his agent at the beginning of the summer when he first uh, went AWOL is that he wasn't happy with where he was playing. He was playing out wide a lot rather than mm. playing through the middle uh, with Miofsky as he did at that point when you're talking about the huge success he was having. Yeah. Um, the difference there is that even though Duke was grabbing all the headlines, Miofsky was undeniably still contributing to the yeah. team and making a lot of his goals. And when it went the other way, um, Duke just wasn't reciprocating that. There was a, a rumour that he refused to play a game in January Wow. And basically marching to Robson's office demanding that he get a move away. Um, I think young boys in Switzerland were being linked with him. Where there wasn't um a fee that was agreeable and he had to stay. And then season kind of pans out, remains frustrated, and clearly um under the advisement of his agent, no doubt, but you still have to take personal responsibility. When we got back for pre-season, um, the line was he was injured. That's why he couldn't join the squad in Portugal for our pre-season tour. And then as we're leading into the first game of the season with Queen of the South in the League Cup, I think, Jimmy Delaney just made the announcement that he hasn't returned. Right. Um, clearly, just trying to force a move, like you say, uh, out of the club. Um, I think this is maybe something that happens perhaps on the continent more than it does yeah. in the UK. And his agent um, has a bit of a track record as he's the same agent as Fabio Silva, who was at Rangers <laughs> last <laughs> season. And um, you see the way that guy's career has panned out. He's yeah. not necessarily also been given the best advice. Um, so yeah, it's kind of just, that's how it's played out. Um, and they obviously thought they'd force a move, but no club was forthcoming, mm. quite simply. And you'll know this, um, clubs, when they are involved in recruitment, they look at all the data, They'll do their scouts. They'll, you know, reel over the footage. But also, they look for character references. People want to know what their kind of character they're bringing to the dressing room. And if you're talking about a guy who's literally just gone AWOL, <laughs> I don't too. what what do you have to say for it? Um, and that's the way it played out. Um, I entirely expected after the window shut and he was still an Aberdeen player that one day we'll get the statement, two lines, you know. We wish him well in his future endeavours. Mm-hmm. But then, yeah, it came out. Um, he'd been welcomed back. And, yeah, the rest is history. Now he's got a chance to... I uh, came on as a sub against Hearts in our last game and mm-hmm. created the winning goal. That's interesting. It's interesting. I mean, I'm trying to think there. You're saying... I mean, Mark Viduka comes straight to my head in terms of... Yeah. We had the fucking tube, turns up, buggers off. But then when he comes back, he fucking sticks it in and he's a fucking wonder player. So and the, the good thing with Duke is you know how good he is. Well, that's just it. That's, it was this kind of um, ironic thing that he's left because of how frustrated he was playing under Robson and um, he who shall not be named. <laughs> and you're looking at the Jimmy Clean team and thinking, well, Miofsky's going. There's going to be a place in that team. And this is a perfect team for the yeah. way that Duke plays. Uh, it's just a shame that, like I say, he made a really, a series of very bad choices. Uh, just the polar opposite to how Boyan Miofsky conducted himself when yeah. Miofsky's looking at this career-changing, life-changing move and he was a model professional turning up, still playing games in the League Cup when he's got this move to a Champions League team on his horizon. I do, I do wonder if that's based on Duke's coming fee with Benfica, you know what I mean? And, yeah. And he's kind of, and I dare say Benfica, he's, he's still all these young guys are all treated like superstars because what they can, whereas, as I say, you're coming for the Slovakia league, it's a wee bit different, you know what I mean? You're like, you, you know how good you've got it. Yeah, perhaps, yeah. Um, right, so squad-wise, like I say, 
Another guy who stands out, you, you brought him up earlier on, Leighton Clarkson, he looks like he's ready to shine. He looks like he's ready to take the jersey. Certainly from watching the highlights, he's, he's somebody. He arrives in the box late. He's he, he's grabbing the goals. He's running the midfield. I mean, that that was a guy, when you signed him, that was a guy you thought you were getting at. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Technically, just an unbelievable footballer. Mm. And much like uh, Connor Barron, but almost to a greater extent, because Clayton Clarkson was obviously, yeah, uh, you know, we spent a decent chunk of change on him um, and convinced him when I'm pretty sure that yourselves and perhaps even Rangers were sniffing about when we were trying to get him on a permanent from Liverpool. And to pull it off, it was just an incredible piece of business. And then it, you're watching the ball, like I say, sail over <laughs> the guy's head, chasing second balls. And like, what the hell are we doing here? This guy is with the ball can create chances he can score goals from distance he's unbelievable from set pieces just yeah a, a huge waste of his talent last season um thankfully jimmy clean's come in identified what he can do is not playing him in the center midfield role as such has kind of earmarked mm -hmm. the number 10 role mm -hmm. so he doesn't have to get involved in the donkey work anymore yeah. he can just focus on being the creative maverick player that he is and yeah we're mm -hmm. seeing it's a shame because he started really well. He then picked up a shoulder injury and I think the last game of the League Cup group stage. So we missed him for a little bit of time there, but now he's back and yeah, he's looking good. Yeah. It, it reminds me, you talk about that, it reminds me I was, um, when I spoke to the Hearts guys recently and I'm watching Hearts and I've got Stephen Naismith and they're going by Jan Danda, who's a fantastic football player and they're just lumping the board. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, what's the fucking point in saying this guy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Makes absolutely no sense, does it? Uh, uh, so, so who else in the squad is is sticking out? Obviously, Mitov's been a, a wonder sign, and he, uh, well, again, you you can tell me this is me thinking Aberdeen goalies are good. I, I don't know, I've got a, a weird <laughs> fiction here. Know what I mean, but um, but like everything I'm watching, he looks like a mega important player. Um, your boy Nielsen midfield's looking the part. I mean, it, it just looks like a totally balanced team. Now. It does. It's just, there's so much to like about it now. Um, with Mitov, I'll be brutally honest, when I watched him play for Sonos versus Aberdeen, I never quite saw really what people were talking about. Right, okay. He never really, I don't think he really ever delivered as such. And when, I mean, this is just snobbishness on my part, but <laughs> signing players from St. Johnston isn't necessarily hugely exciting to me. Of course. Um, so when Mitov comes in, you know, he had a relatively easy time of it in the group stage yeah. games. But then the league games card started him coming in and he's made some, I mean, this penalty save against Ross County up in Dingwall. Mm. That was, that told me, okay, now we're talking. Yeah, now we've got keeper. a serious goalkeeper on our hands. Like we did with Joe Lewis in the first five years we had him. Um, a guy that you can look at and in the same way as when Peter Schmeichel played for Man United. You know, mm. you can look at this guy and say, well, there's a number of points at the end of the season that we're going to be able to attribute to Dimitar yeah, Mitov. Yeah, I agree and, with that. Yeah. And unlike Belarus, seems to embrace the challenge, embrace the pressure, and he's created an amazing connection with the fans already. Right. And it's just performing at a very high standard, um, so much so that when he makes a mistake like he did against Hearts, it's like what's happened here? I mean, this guy's, yeah, this guy's yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, he, oh, he is human after all. I guess okay, yeah. fair enough. But and what's love great about that is you know he's now cemented his place as the goalkeeper of Bulgaria, um, and he's young enough to know that this is a chance to shine and like Miofsky, perhaps you know get himself a move elsewhere mm -hmm. um, if he plays at a high standard here. But a guy looks to be loving it, uh, embracing life in Aberdeen, which is always great to see. Stevert Helton and Nielsen, my God. <laughs> I, love, I, I love this guy so much so i think i mentioned to you my partner's from uh, is from norway mm -hmm. so in the summer we were on holiday there and the nielsen deal was announced when i was in oslo and i was talking to you were family members who are majorly into football supporting rosenberg right. and um they mentioned to me that Thiever Telton and nielsen as a player direct quote he's a good player but he's got an absolutely psychotic desire to win football games. And that is exactly what we were doing in this club for so long. I was like, oh my God, this guy sounds perfect. Um, 
it was mentioned to us by a Norwegian journalist when we spoke about him because we always try and do our research on new players, especially when they come from abroad. And he likened them to Scott Brown, um, okay. particularly later on in Scott Brown's career at Celtic, when there's nothing really flashy about what he does. He just keeps the ball moving. He's got he's a real leader on the pitch, and he's got this way of having relationships with referees where he's probably committed about a hundred fouls in the game and yet never is in any danger of getting sent off. Um, and I've seen some of the instances of that um, against Motherwell. His fouls all had a purpose to them. They're cynical, they're nasty, but they're also not getting any bookings. And Aberdeen have always, always been too nice for my liking. Um, so to have someone like him... I'm thinking, back, I'm thinking back, what was the name of the big boy with a beard? Lee Richardson? Was it Lee Richardson? Oh, Remember Lee Richardson, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Before my time, Lee Richardson. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Dirty, I've, I've dirty had, bastard. I love them, man. <laughs> I've had to contend with him. Mickey Paper, there was another man. Said, but he did get sent off. Okay, I take your point. Yeah, we've had a couple in isolation. <laughs> but uh, as a group, I, I mean, the game against Hearts at the very end when Shanklin tries to noise up Mitov and Mitov's in his face and then Helena Nielsen's laughing in his face also at the same time. We've got some street fighters on the team now, and guys who's live standards, and that's what we've needed for so long now. I always like it when a manager comes in with somebody, generally somebody with a bad age about them, somebody he's worked with, and somebody he can trust. He's basically, yeah. boom, you're on the pitch, you're my guy on the pitch. I mean, because yeah. I, I, I was looking and I was, I was like 33 year old, 300 grand in Scotland, 300 grand is quite a bit of change, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And for a 33 year old, and I can remember a famous 33-year-old Joy Selleck for fucking 300 grand. <laughs> but, um, so who else? Who else am I missing? I mean, like I would say, Papi, Habib. Oh, was, Papi. What, what, Papi, tell, tell Habib, yeah. My word. We wouldn't have talked about him in April, I don't think, because he was on loan in Norway at the time. And at that point, it wouldn't have shocked me at all if in June, July, it was just quite like that we'd signed... Like he, there was an arrangement made that he would go to Christiansen on a permanent contract. Comes back after our preseason tour. Kept playing in Norway up until about July. Comes back in. I'm just a different animal. Um, I think the time in Norway was also good for him because mm -hmm. he just got some minutes under his belt and got a few goals. When he came to Aberdeen, you know, we talked about Duke a minute ago. He, I think, went on strike with his club in Belgium also to force a move so in that case good on you good on you Papi not so good, not so good on you Duke um, <laughs> it comes in fan, eh? oh absolutely <laughs> I mean I'll never deny that he comes in Barry Robson the way that Papi Gay frames it is, Papi, is Robson comes in and tells him he's going to be an essential part of the team we need you come to Aberdeen and he I think the longest he ever played on the pitch from one spell would have been 45 minutes in Helsinki um, and just never got going. And I think when you're talking about a guy like that who's from Senegal, um, has no family, no connections in Aberdeen, and the football's not working out for him, I think he became a quite lonely guy um, mm. and just wasn't enjoying his time in Aberdeen. Um, since he's come back in, it feels like it's just a completely different atmosphere. Um, and that comes down to a manager who's got a bit of faith in you, yeah. giving clear directions. And it feels like this group of players now it feels more supportive of one another. And and Pappy's recognised that. And he's been given his chance. Do I think this is going to last? I'm not necessarily sure. Mm -hmm. But while he's been given his opportunity, he's taken it six goals in the in the league and unfortunately suffered a, a quad injury. So he'll be out until about January time now. But um, that's just another example of what Jimmy Tillian has been able to do with these guys who, like you say, were completely out of the picture. Um, only a few months ago. And I think that mm -hmm. talks about Jimmy Tolene's man management. Yeah, wild, wild. Right, okay, we'll, we'll kick into this season so far and we'll, we'll have a good wee natter about the games. Um, so, no Europe this time. Back to the League Cup groups for you. Drawn with Queen of the South, East Coast Bright, Air doing the battle. Four wins from four, scoring 15 and conceding one. Setting up a second round home tie uh, to Queen's Park. A late 1-0 win takes you through the quarters. And a smashing of Spartans, again at home, setting up the semi-final tie on the 2nd of November at Hamden against Celtic. We'll, we'll chip in about that later as well. Yeah. 
Um, likewise, opening day, 2 1 1 away to St. Johnson was followed by a great 3 1 1 over St. Mern at Pataudry. A 2 0 1 over Kelly at home was followed by another clean sheet and a last gas late win away to Ross County. Murrow and Dundee up next, both going down 2 1. And then the last game and another late show, a 3 2 1 against 10 man hearts that leaves Aberdeen sitting in second place in the table. Seven games played, seven wins, 15 scored, six conceded. Nine goal difference, 21 points on board, same as Celtic in first and five points ahead of Rangers in third. Now, as always, I will I will freely admit I went I went and watched all the highlights of your games. I don't think I've watched a full match of any of them. Um so from looking at your games, this is my summary of it. So you're playing this 4-2-3-1. Defense yeah. looks totally settled. I mean, I think there's only a couple of games where you've kind of shaken sh- it up for whatever mm-hmm. reason. But I think this is a game for me because you y- maybe get the draw, uh, the- you get the win on the last kick of the ball. And, and like the Ross County game is a VAR fucking nightmare, isn't it? No, I mean, fucking VAR's going through Valley that day. <laughs> but, but your goal is saved and then you've scored the 96 minute winner. Yep. It's a team. Right and I, and 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 however I, I've heard all these people on phone ends kind of going ah they've not been tested oh they won the command of the man sent half but honestly for everything I'm seeing the goalkeeper look is allowing your defence to be confident in himself which then allows you guys to push forward the attacking play seems I mean even the two there's goals to everywhere and yeah. it's 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 impressive to see I mean the Hearts game. For the highlights I watched, looked like a belt in a game. What was the other one? The St. Johnston looked like a belt in a game. And Played then even if you go back yeah. to the League Cup games, guys like Shade and Morris are, are coming in and, and offering something and looking looking like players. I mean, it must be exciting times. And as people say, fucking enjoy it, man. Fuck sake, you had enough <laughs> shape, man. I mean, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I've been trying to tell people over the last. Yeah, I- couple of months on our show especially yeah i mean I, I'm, I'm as much of a critic as anyone but we've had to eat a lot of shite over the past yeah. two seasons and as i said you know, we, there's nothing we can do about the way the fixture list has played no, out no. and i would dare say that last season we only played one half decent team domestically all season as well and we still ended up in the bottom six uh, yeah. so we've beaten yeah st, well, st. Mirren, kilmarnock and hearts who were Three of the teams who qualified for Europe off the back of their mm-hmm. performances last season. Dundee were a good team. Dingwall, as you know from Celtic's last game, is not an easy place to go not either. Place, so fun. yeah, come away with seven wins. I mean, there, there's generally nothing more you can ask. And what I'm so enthused about is that I know this team has still got room to grow. Yeah, We're yeah. still nowhere near the finished article, but the fact that we're coming through these games and not necessarily playing the best football yet... But in the big moments, our players are coming up and there's no better example than what you just mentioned at Dingwall where Mitov makes that incredible save and then Kevin Nisbet gets his first goal for Abney. Yeah, yeah. I mean, bringing bring Kevin Nisbet in at that point for him to then pop up and score that goal. Yeah. Like I say, it's a shame for Kevin Nisbet because I was a massive fan and to the point I thought Celtic should have signed him. The Millwall thing kind of then... Uh, what you talking about, your clown. But I have no doubt he'll come back up here and he'll get himself going again and he'll look like a player again. Um, I think the fact that you have avoided a lot of injuries, I mean, you've, you've just brought up a couple there, the, the Clarks and Andy, the gay one, but you, you, you've avoided them in, in, in major places. Yep. Um, but everybody kind of looks like... It comes back to your original point. You look like a team. Yeah. You look like a team, and that's not always been the case. For it's... One of the very first things Jimmy Tleen said, it's not about me, it's not about any individual player, it's not about the chairman or anyone else, it's it's about the entire club, it's about the club and the city coming together as one to make us, make us a force once again. And you see it, um, you're talking about players who've come together, um, you know, Slobodan Rubicic and Dimitar Mitov appear to be best pals immediately, <laughs> as well as um, Pala Versa. You're talking about Papi Gay coming into this relatively, for him, new dressing room, given that he was still in Norway until July and feeling like there's a completely different support system in place for these players. And go to someone like Kevin Nisbet again, who, like you say, hasn't had a great time of it at Millwall. Um, don't think Millwall was the right fit for him, but that's no. you know neither here nor there. Gets an opportunity to come up to 
one of the biggest clubs in Scotland and, you know, almost kickstarted his career. And he's oh. done well taking it. Um, there's a lot to be said for players who've got a point to prove. Um, and we've yeah. got players like that who Shaden Morty just mentioned, Vinny Bajowin's back in the setup. Duke obviously is, you know, had some regrettable decisions in the summer and now has a point to prove. Slobodan Rubicic, who people were very he was a divisive figure amongst Aberdeen player fans last season, has come onto a game looking like the class international player that he um we were said he could be. Mm -hmm. Um but the whole thing, like you just say there, it is teamwork and yeah when you've got that and the going gets tough like it did against hearts like it did um, Dundee. Dundee like Hull, i was gonna say, i was gonna also stay up at dens park as well when we they peg us back and we mm -hmm. stuck at it and kept in there it makes sense that people are gonna make more of an effort to run for their teammate when there's a genuine bond and i think that's yeah. also that jimmy clean has made imperative because we know in Scotland, like, you know, we're not going to sign the best players. And sometimes games are going to come down to who wants it more. And right now, yeah, that's, you can't accuse Aberdeen of not wanting the absolute best. I do th I do think there's a lot to be said about a new manager coming in and no flooding the team. Basically saying to this, a lot of the squad that are there, I yeah. believe in he's, he's a better than that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And, and getting ready, kind of, whatever. This is a, a wee squad... Like you said, you would like to see additions now. Now that you've kind of got the buy-in for guys yeah. getting the addition now, rather than I mean, as I remember, Goodwin came in and he just flooded the team. With, oh yeah, it was like it was like fifteen out, ah, exactly. like that, you know I mean? and eight, nine of them were wingers. <laughs> <laughs> One yeah. was Tony Stewart. Oh um, geez, no. yeah. What, <laughs> Even um... I have a laugh every time I hear the <laughs> man. <laughs> Yeah, like I said to you, I mean, I didn't expect the huge turnaround just because we've spent so much money. We've burned through so much of this money yeah. in the last three seasons. We were definitely relying on the Miofsky money, which didn't come until much later in the mm -hmm. window. We were probably banking on Lewis Ferguson, who you know got the injury, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. so wasn't moving anywhere. I also, I've got this part of my mind that thinks that Lewis Ferguson should be a Bologna lifer now. I won't we'll see a penny for him, um, given how loved he is there. Um, and the thing about Jimmy Tolina is that he said that he doesn't want to use the loan market all that much. He doesn't want to bring in players just to fill a space, mm. you know, just in case. And every player he brought in, again, with the exception of Peter Rambo, who I think was a little bit of a punt based on the way that the Scandinavian market works quite often, where they bring players from Africa who come through these academies yeah, 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 and yeah. they can be relatively cost-effective players and Peter Ambrose has scored more goals in the Hungarian league in that last season than Mijowski had right, okay. when the season prior to when he comes to Aberdeen. So there was a reason to believe that he could, you know, translate that to Scottish ball. It's not worked so far. But other than that, yeah, meet off. It's still, it's still mega early. I mean, I think oh, anybody, anybody come to Scotland has, they've, they've got a bit of selling the day. If guys come in and hit the ground, you kind of go, fair fucks to you. But I just think Scotland's, quite a mad place to come in <laughs> I really do you know I mean? it's a mad place to come in and especially when you're getting 15 minutes here 10 minutes here it's yeah, you yeah, wish there was a reserve you wish there's a reserve league so you could just get up to speed with the way the game works here but that was a big and, thing we owe at Celtic I mean yeah. see if you go and look at O's goal per minute ratio it was a building you know what I mean he mm -hmm. just never ever got a game yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean well he did against Aberdeen um, yeah, well, well, well. Yeah, well. <laughs> Like many players, I think he scored more against us than anyone else. But anyway, Aberdeen, um, Aberdeen Hibs, and St. Mirren, I think, on and Hearts. There was it was like three or four teams, and they never scored again. I think they scored like eighteen <laughs> goals. They only scored against three or four teams. But um, yeah, good times, right. good times. But yeah, every player, Mitov. Good times. <laughs> me, me. But like I say, Mitov comes in, not Mr. Game. Malloy, not Mr. Game. <sighs> Helena Nielsen, integral, uh, Topi Keskinen up front, essential. It looks like such a dangerous player. We're now getting anti Palaver, so back team. It's genuine, genuine quality that he's brought in. And that's why we're talking about a team that's won seven out of seven. Exactly, exactly. Right, so let's get on to it then. So we've got a game a week on... No, it's not a week, it's a Saturday. <laughs> yep. um, so we played four times last season, right? So yes. there was a 3-1 first meeting at Pataudry. Yeah. 6 to hand, 
than that one each game that we spoke about in the three three game and the, in the cup, right? So yes, yes. all three of them decent, almost level games, six nil aside, obviously. Yeah. But honestly, it's not really worth talking about them because of the change in manager. So, so we've got, I've got to hear what has changed since Taylor came in confidence, but we've done that as well. But now talking with with coming to Celtic part in mind, how do you think? you will approach the game. And in in my opinion, before you crack on, I can't see him changing. But that's based on the fact he's no change <laughs> in his games. But I don't know. I mean, what what do you think? I don't think we're gonna dramatically change anything. I don't think we're gonna change our shape entirely. Um one, I mean, it was such a strange thing the way that Jimmy Tillin came into happening. Because like you said, he agrees the deal in April. It's announced and then he doesn't come until yeah. the middle of June. He still sees out his time at Elfsburg until um, the time was such agreed by the clubs that he would come to Aberdeen. So in that time, we're kind of like watching and looking out for Elfsburg results just with a lot of curiosity how they're doing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. one thing you picked up on was there were games with Malmo and some of the bigger teams in Sweden where you look at the stats and sometimes elsewhere would have less than 30% possession. Right, okay. And come away with a 3-0 win. <laughs> and you're just thinking, like, how the hell has that happened? So what he's obviously, in his time at Elfsburg, done is being able to create a team where when they're going away from home, they can sit in, they can mm-hmm. contain, and then they can hit on the break. And they did that very effectively, and that's how he... That's one of the key factors in how he overachieved with Elfsburg and obviously earned the move to Aberdeen. We kind of do that right now. Um, we are prepared to sit and break, but we also do like the, to press high up the pitch. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a lot of... I wouldn't say there's any player in the team I would say as a passenger from a defensive perspective. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we do like to press, and I hope that we do that because I think that's the way to do things. I think we're... We've come to Celtic Park so many times and just sat back, said our prayers and hope for the best and even though we're looking good from a defensive perspective we have still conceded some daft goals yeah, yeah and i don't yeah. think i don't think we're good enough to just sit in and contain celtic for 90 minutes mm-hmm. and also i think we're a better team going forward than we are defensive right now and i think mm-hmm. we can pose a threat um i know celtic only conceded one goal in the league which i was a little bit astonished to learn but obviously ross kennedy gave you a game Falkirk gave you a little bit of a scare in the League Cup there, and mm-hmm. um, the team in Germany with the, <laughs> with, the, with, the em, with the emblem behind you uh, <laughs> score, scored one or two in a, in a European in a European game. So I think there's ways to get at Celtic. I mean, is Carter Vickers likely to play? Do you know what? I don't think so. I don't think so. The talk was he should be back, but I've I've, I've not heard. Either or, so. so it's it's likely going to be Scales and the boy Trusty. Trusty, yeah. And what Johnson and then Taylor's injured as well, isn't he? Johnson Taylor's injured, so the boy Valley will play. Yeah. The um, fullback. And I'll acknowledge. I think Casper Schmeichel is a, a really shrewd piece of business mm. um, in replacing Joe Hart. Yeah. And you know, your centre midfield players. You know, Cal McGregor has been the scourge of Aberdeen for most <laughs> of his career. The boy Coons come out a really good game this season, yeah, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, Kyogo looks a bit back to his normal self, and Maeda's absolutely rapid. We know what he's going to bring. So it's going to be a huge test. We're going to learn so much about our yeah. team, win, lose, or draw in this mm-hmm. game. Um, the flip side of the coin, and Graham, one of the lads on our show, made the point after we beat Hearts of like, we've given ourselves such a nice cushion over the rest of our competition. Why not? on this occasion, go to Celtic Park and bring what we can do. We've got talented players in Topi Keskinen, Jamie McGrath, Pala Versa, Hilton and Nielsen, Graham Shane. They're all goal threats in some way, shape or form. Mackenzie and Devlin have been unbelievable and that's why they've earned their Scotland call-ups. So why not? It's not, I don't like to use the word free hit because I don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. But we've given ourselves, like let's say that cushion in the league to go on down you and take you on and see what we're all about. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, like, obviously, our last two results, or last two performances have been pretty poor. That Ross County game was howling, absolutely howling. And 
and the, the German team as you spoke about. <laughs> well, that was <laughs> uber howling. Um, but no, no, it's interesting because, like I say, you look like a team. You don't look like one. How many times have we seen new managers come in and they're all out of attack and everybody's yeah. talking about them? They're brilliant, and then they go to Ibrox, they go to Sale Park, totally capitulate. I just can't see that for you guys. I hope it does, but <laughs> I just can't see it. And 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 I and I don't. I, I can see a really really good football game. To be honest, that's what I'm expecting, and I think it's going to set up the semi final. Whatever way it goes, I think it's going to set up the semi final to be a fucking blockbuster, man. I think it's going to be class. When we met, we were previewing the semi final last season, yeah. and Aberdeen were in absolute disarray. Yeah. Both. Mm-hmm on the pitch and off the pitch we are a completely different animal now and mm-hmm. i genuinely i'm for the first time in a long time i'm looking forward to aberdeen going to celtic park and seeing what happens our record against you is nothing short no, hor- not horrendous that. um historically like we won 24 times in the league and i can think of three of them off the top of my head which is scary um a game where david Drillich burst past uh, paul lambert under Steve yeah. Patterson in the most makeshift of makeshift teams. <laughs> the night when Pasquinelli uh, took Pasquinelli. the ball of David Marshall and rolled into his net. And then when uh, Andy Constant in 2018 scored the winning goal to get a second place on the last that, game yeah. of the season. Yeah. Since then, I mean, like I say, we've taken some absolute scuddings off you, um, especially that 6 0 win, that 6 0 defeat, sorry, mm-hmm. uh, last season. I don't expect that at all. I think we'll be go down, be competitive. If you're asking me to predict the team, I imagine the defence will be as it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mitov, Devlin, Rubicic, Malloy, and McKenzie. Yeah. I think we'll go with a flat three in front. Right, okay. Shinny, well. Hilton and Nielsen and Palaversa. Right, and drop right. Clarkson just because Palaversa brings a little bit more physicality. And then we'll have Keskin and, and McGrath wide with Esther Sokler up front just because oh, Esther I think will be the... Um, He's the best form of defense from attack. Right, and he'll be, right, okay, he'll yeah, run all yeah. game. He's got energy. He can hold the ball up. And if we're talking 60, 70 minutes and it's still all square, we can bring on Clarkson, Duke, Kevin mm-hmm. Isbitt. We're, mm-hmm. We've got some strength and depth now. So, yeah, I think there's every chance we can come and get a result. Yeah, by the way, yeah. What the fuck have done in a few months, man? <laughs> Just wait until Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so we spoke there about the semi final as well. Are you going to the semi final? Um, I am. Yeah. Last time I asked you this, you said no. <laughs> well, no, I good. was in. I remember, I was in. I was playing a gig in in Vernes the night right, before. Yeah. I we were playing a gig in Glasgow actually on the same night, so I did listen to it on the radio, and um, just thinking how how unbelievable the game sounded. From from the car stereo, and then when I went to penalties, like oh, God, oh no, Joe Hart's taking the winning penalty. Don't let oh, Joe no, no, the no. winning penalty. Oh, oh, I hit the post. <laughs> fucking tits. Yes, Kelrus, why are you down with crap? Get up, you. Oh, what what a game, man! What a game. Aye, aye. So semi final. Bloody I mean, hell! Like I say, I can see this one at the weekend being really tight. Right, I, I still think we we'll, yeah. we'll kind of edge it. Being at home, that is a big thing. I think, we, but. It then throws up. Ah, I think the semi final is going to be mega tough for Celtic. Mega tough, mm-hmm. and and like you say, you you hate the word. It's not a free hit, but if ever there's a time to go for it, fuck it. No, I mean, it's just I can I can imagine it being a really good. I I, I would rather Rangers go up than be perfectly honest. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I was waiting for um Crisis United another another leg. Can't imagine. Can't Motherwell? Remember anymore. Motherwell? Oh, it's Motherwell, isn't it? Motherwell, no, Motherwell. No. United got pumped, didn't they? Of course they uh, did. Um, yeah, I mean, you weren't necessarily my first choice of opponent. Uh, like you said, we again, like McInnes had so many hits at Celtic in his time, and the one time that we, for me, deserved to win was the cup final, um, where we went toe to toe with you and took mm-hmm. the game to you. And um, we've tried being. With a low defensive block, we tried that man marking thing where literally like Shea Logan would follow um who do used to have Patrick Roberts all over the pitch, no matter where he went, and vice versa, Concert would follow James Forrest wherever he went to score again. Um 
<laughs> Aberdeen fans, like we talked about this last season um, with the Rangers final, like we don't want to go to these places. Yeah. And no, there's no point. No, yeah, yeah. Just hope for the best. Uh, it's not going to work usually because you're going to have the lion's share of the ball, and chances are, you know, a refereeing decision might go. Oh, way, I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that. Uh, you know, <laughs> VAR goes down, avoids Todd Cantwell punching one of our players, Ryan Kent, whoever it was. Um, like you say, I mean, we just want to have positive, a positive intent and try and win these games rather than having your manager come out afterwards and say, well, you know, we're just little Aberdeen and we don't uh, have the right yeah, to yeah, take the game yeah. to these players. Gavin, man, it's it's really, it's good to speak to somebody on these who are enthused about their team and encouraged by their team and all, because, it, you know what I mean? I want Celtic to win everything, right? I, I, yeah. I honestly do. But I yep. want a competitive league. I want us to be... I mean, I grew up, Aberdeen was a country place to go to. And Aberdeen yep. would regularly come down the road and, and give us a, a, a sore face. And if we could get Scottish football to a point where you guys are... If Hearts get their finger out and fucking sort out with their names, you know what I mean? Hibs and all, and like... It's just... But it's, you know, the thing I, I want it to be where you guys are playing Rangers and I'm sitting honestly going, I reckon Aberdeen will beat them. You know what I mean? That's what we're, the days are kind of... I still want to say right? obviously. <laughs> yeah, of course, but I think generally we do all want a more competitive league, don't we? And we want someone to come along and, you know, rock the apple cart. Um, and our situation right now is... Um, I have mixed feelings because obviously it's hilarious how bad they are. <laughs> given, how, uh, given how proud they were last season and how... They were always talking about how much better Shanklin was than Mionski, which was obviously not true. But it is kind of bittersweet because I do look at it and think like early days, but like a strong Aberdeen team in this league, put a strong Hearts team in this league, the way Rangers are right now. Mm -hmm. I genuinely think you could have been talking about yeah. a world where Rangers don't finish in the top three. And just imagine what that would do to Scottish football. But See, again, as, again. As, it, as, as it is, I guess we're just going to have to carry the... the the baton alone because hearts are going to be in the championship if, next season. If we go back to the, if we go back to that thing, ah, oh, they've not been tested, they've not been tested. So fuck if they've not been tested. See, the point is, if you guys go and beat everybody else in the league for the remainder of the season, you're yeah. going to be in a fucking title. Yeah. You know, you're going to be in it. That's a fax. So yeah. just do that and then you'll, you, you, you get results. I mean, I just, I don't know. I don't really know my point in the way, but <laughs> so I'm not going to ask you for a prediction because I'm a wee bit fear. Um, oh, I'll, I'll gladly give you a prediction. Right, give me a prediction then. Oh, I'm I'm going with my going my heart and going my head, and I'm going to tell you what I said on our podcast. It'll be three 0 Aberdeen. Say that again. It's going to be three 0 Aberdeen. Three 0 Nay bother. <laughs> Right, okay. I'm, Topi I'm going to have to go, have to go and Jamie McGrath and Slobodan Rubicic. Right, all right, all right. Um, so we'll just finish off usual, right? So what's the hope for the season ahead? Now, oh, you, wow. you're, in, you're encouraged so far. What yeah. is the hope, the, the, the realistic hope? Oh, let's not bring realism to this conversation. <laughs> We're okay, on cloud nine. we're on cloud nine Both right now. Right. Um, I think the minimum I'll accept is a treble. The treble, the treble, not the treble right there. <laughs> Hundred percent record the entire yeah, way okay, through the season. No. Thank you very much. An invincible treble, domestic in, uh, fucking dog. Not even invincible at all, winning, all conquering treble. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Failing, right. failing that. Given where we came from, given how much work we had to do given the challenge we have had to face, which people often like to overlook, the Duke situation, the injuries to Clarkson, Pulvara, Gay, Miofsky, the turnaround, um, where we were when we had that clown from Cornwall last season. The progress that already has been astonishing. I look forward to seeing what we do in January if we bring in any more players. And I want to be back in Europe next season. Brilliant. So uh, third place and a Scottish Cup will do me. But right now, we're invincible. We're the only team in Europe with a hundred percent record. <laughs> I love it, mate. I love it. So right. give me, give me a league title. Right, okay. But right before I let you go, as always, tell the people where the people can listen to your podcast, where they can follow you on social media. Um, you can find 
talking to us on the socials on twitter and instagram um just search abz podcast you'll find us you'll find lots of posts trolling hearts fans usually <laughs> and when it comes to where we can find us on if there's on all the major streaming services you can think of all the good ones and even some bad ones well gavin as, as always mate outstanding thank you very much for taking your time and speaking to me i've thoroughly enjoyed it um uh, i'll finish again thank usual. you very much Hope your team gets pumped to the weekend. Um, <laughs> but I, I really do wish you a good season. I, I hope I hope you keep on fucking trucking, man. Honest to God. The thing is, I know that you're being so sincere when you say that, and I just can't say the same no, thing. I hope fine, that's fine, you, that's and I hope fine, that bro. Atalanta go one better than Dortmund did. Oh my god, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> right, Gavin, thank you very much, mate. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you, fella.